and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be having a look at the numeracy questions which you may come across in higher chemistry. These questions are based upon chemistry and it will often be at the end of a question which has dealt with the topic that you're familiar with. However, the questions themselves do not require any chemistry knowledge to be able to answer them. They are purely numeracy or maths based questions. So I'm going to show you three examples and then give you three examples to try. So the first one we have here tells us a little bit about um, a topic. So it says that 100 grams of tomatoes contains 13.7 milligrams of vitamin C. It then gives you some more information. So it tells you that a woman has a recommended daily allowance of around 75 milligrams and you're to work out the mass of tomatoes that she would need to eat to be able to reach that recommended daily allowance. So for these questions, um, it's often useful to find some sort of correlation between numbers and do this using a proportion method. So the correlation that we have is that 100 grams of tomatoes will give you 13.7 milligrams of vitamin C. We're trying to get to 75 milligrams of vitamin C, so we need to divide this number down to then go back up again. So if we do 100 divided by 13.7, if you were to work that out, that would tell you how much tomato you would need to eat to be able to get one milligram of vitamin C. But we're wanting 75, so if we then multiply that up by 75, then you'll find how much tomato is required to give you the 75 milligrams from the question. If you calculate that value, you find that you need to eat 400, 547 grams of tomatoes. Let's look at another example. So this example is based upon anaesthetic. So the maximum safe dose of lidocaine for an adult is 4.5 milligrams per kilogram of their body. In one centimetre cubed of lidocaine, you can get 10 milligrams of the actual compound itself. And you are to calculate the maximum volume of a lidocaine solution that you could give to an adult of a certain weight. So if we start from, again, a relationship from the question, so one kilogram, the maximum you can have is 4.5 milligrams. We know that the adult weighs 70 kilograms. So the maximum amount of lidocaine that they can have is 4.5 times 70, which is 315 milligrams. We then have to look at how much volume we could give them. So we know that one centimeter cubed gives you 10 milligrams. So one divided by 10 would give you one milligram. And then if we multiply up by the amount of milligrams that we know the person can have, which is 315. If you calculate that value, you would be able to give them 31.5 centimetres cubed of the solution. Let's do one final example before trying some yourself. So this one has um, a few more parts to it. So you have a barrel and it contains 195 litres of cask strength whiskey, which costs £1,300. It says the cask, the cask strength whiskey is diluted with water to reduce the concentration from 65% of alcohol to 46 before they bottle it. And you need to find the cost of the cask strength whiskey that you would need to produce a 0.7 litre bottle. So the relationship that we have that we will come to eventually is that 195 litres costs £1,300. Now we need to know how much of the cask strength whiskey we require to be able to work out the price. So if we are starting with a 65% and we're diluting down to 46%, so we're trying to make a 0.7 litre bottle so we know that 46 percent of the bottle is alcohol so if we do 46 percent of 0.7 liters then you find that 0 0.32 liters of the bottle is alcohol that means that the original 65 percent 
must be the same as that volume of alcohol. So we need to find what the 100% volume that you would have to measure out would be. So 65% is 0 0.322. So if we divide by 65% to find what 1% of that solution would be, and then multiply up to 100, you find that you would require 0 0.495 litres of the cask strength whiskey, which is 65% volume. So now we can go back to this original relationship. So if we go back down to one litre, you would have 1,300 divided by 195. And then we're going to multiply that to the volume that we require. And that would cost you £3.30 to get that volume of cask strength whiskey, which you would then dilute to the 0.7 litres. Here are three examples for you to try. Remember, try and find a relationship that you can work from and use proportion to go down to one on one of the sides and multiply back up where you can. Pause the video now and try these. In this question, you're given the definition for the energy density of a fuel as the value of energy that is released when one kilogram of the fuel is burned. You're given the enthalpy of combustion of butanol as negative 2670 kilojoules per mole and you're to calculate the energy density in kilojoules per kilogram. So to go from moles to a mass then we must need the gram formula mass. At the side we're going to first of all write out the formula for butanol and work out the gram formula mass. So now we know that negative 2,670 kilojoules is produced when we burn 74 grams of butanol. So if we divide by 74 to find what one gram would be, and then multiply by a thousand to get a kilogram, and if you do that sum on the calculator, you find that the energy density of butanol is 36,081 kilojoules per kilogram. Looking at question two, we're given the recommended daily allowance for vitamin E as 20 milligrams. We're told that 15 millilitres of olive oil contains 1.6 milligram, and therefore what percentage of your recommended daily allowance is present in 50 milligrams? So starting from the relationship that we have in the question, so 15 millilitres gives 1.6 milligrams. We're trying to go up to 50 millilitres, so if we first of all go down to 1, so we're going to have 1.6 divided by 15, and then up to 50. But we want to know what it is as a percentage. So the recommended daily allowance is 20 milligrams. So if we take the value that you get from 50 mils divided by the recommended daily allowance and then times by 100, we find that this is 27% of the recommended daily allowance. And here's the final question. Five grams of behenic acid is obtained from 50 milliliters of Ben oil and one litre of Ben oil costs 90 pounds, how much would it cost to buy enough Ben oil to produce 20 grams of behenic acid? So we're starting again from the relationship that we have first of all in the question. So five grams of the acid can be obtained from 50 millilitres of the oil. 
we want to get 20 grams of the acid so you can either go down to 1 and then back up to 20 or if you just notice the relationship that it's times 4 so 20 grams will be 50 times 4 so 200 millilitres of the oil and then we're having a look at how much that costs so we're using the second relationship so 1 litre costs 90 pounds so 200 millilitres which is a fifth will be 90 divided by 5 which is 18 pounds. I hope that you find this video helpful. There are lots of examples of these questions in the past papers. Have a look at both the new hire and the revised hire to find some examples to try. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.